as you know, Pope Benedict is in the United States, and some people think that while he is there, he will offer an apology to victims of sexual abuse. Well, when it comes to apologies, the Assembly of First Nations is still waiting for one from the Canadian government for the creation of residential schools that took young children from their families and for the abuse of treatment some of the resident students received. In the meantime, though, the Assembly of First Nations is planning for another day of action, and some people are saying Aboriginal protesters may copy the recent example of people in Tibet in advance of the Olympics this summer before the Winter Olympics in Vancouver in 2010. Well, for his thoughts on all of this, joining us is the National Chief of the AFN, Phil Fontaine. Chief Fontaine, good to see you. Good to see you, Don. Let me ask you, because we've talked about this before, there's been the, the residential school settlement, but the last time we spoke, no word yet on an apology, and you said that was in many ways just as important as the settlement. What's the latest on that? Well, we've waited a long time for an apology, uh, about 150 years, and uh, we believe the apology is, is central to, uh, to this issue. Um, we have uh, a couple of very important outstanding commitments from uh, the government regarding the apology, including one that the Assembly of First Nations, which is a, uh, a party to the agreement, no. would be involved in writing the language of the, of the apology, plus uh, supporting the government in deciding how the apology will be presented to the, uh, to the nation and, mm -hmm. and to the survivors. And uh, to this point, we've had no engagement with the government. And my fear is that and the worst that could happen in this regard is if the government were to offer us an apology and it was rejected. Uh, the apology has to be sincere. Mm -hmm. It has to be honest. It has to be unencumbered. And it has to be presented to the nation in a significant uh, place. And uh, we want... Uh, no less than what the Japanese Canadians were uh, provided, or the uh, Chinese for the Chinese head tax, which was in the in the House. So, uh, if it's not in the House of Commons, or you don't like what it says, you will meet, I guess, with your fellow chiefs and then decide whether or not to accept. Is that it? Well, we, the government knows uh, what would be acceptable. We, I've written to the Prime Minister. I've laid out the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the, the apology in, in general terms, and uh, as well suggested that uh, that the prime minister must rise in the house and mm -hmm. speak to the nation, and uh, we we ought to be present. And we already have a model uh, with the Australian apology to mm -hmm. the stolen generations. And so far, you haven't heard back, or you're in negotiations. We're still waiting. We're okay. still waiting for the uh, the prime minister or his officials, upon his instructions, to uh, sit and talk with us about the apology and how it will be uh, rolled out. Okay, and in the meantime, you're planning another day of action. That's correct. And is it going to be similar to the last one, which appeared to be uh, there might be problems and protests and railway tracks blocked and so forth, and at the end of the day, very, a little of that, but not a highway block, but very little. Well, we're uh, still committed to uh, the approach that we uh, took last year, which is... Um, public education, public information, hope in, in the process, hoping to convince Canadians that uh, they have to stand with us and to call on the government to take immediate and urgent action on, on First Nations poverty. And uh, will it be more dramatic, though, than last year? I mean, last year, not much happened after the day of action, does it? So well, you have to have uh, some different I mean, kind of action this time. We see this as... Uh, as uh, long process. There's no quick fix. There's no overnight uh, 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 decisions that will be taken that will fix this immediately. And, and we know that it's going to take some time. But uh, the, the point here is that we're dealing with, the, with a, uh, an issue that is, like, is a plague on Canada. Right? It's, a, it's, it's a stain on Canada's reputation internationally. And there is absolutely no reason why Grinding poverty as experienced by too many First Nations people ought to be as in, in, in a country as rich as Canada. So the date for the day of action? May the 29th. May 29th. All right. Now, uh, talking about protests, uh, someone said to me, and this was when the Olympic torch was going through San Francisco and the demonstrations about Tibet, that uh, now I see they're not going to have a torch run in uh, Vancouver for the 2010 Olympics but that Aboriginal issues might trigger the same kind of protests at the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Are you planning some kind of protests uh, in the run-up to the Olympics? I would hope that we, we won't be forced to take disruptive measures. Uh, I'm uh, 
confident and, and optimistic that won't be necessary. I'm personally a, a big supporter uh, of the uh, 2010 Olympics. The Assembly of First Nations has expressed formally its support for the 10, 2010 Olympics, and I've been working with the four host First Nations to make sure that that we're, we're given appropriate exposure uh, during these, uh, these games. And I guess the real problem with a day of action or protesting at the Olympics is uh, you want to draw attention to your problem, but you don't want to create a backlash by interrupting things that uh, people who aren't Aboriginals may think should go on without interruption. Absolutely. We're, we're reaching out to Canadians, and uh, we believe that Canadians are, are, are fair-minded people. And, if, if, uh, and once they know the true uh, uh, story about First Nations poverty, uh, that it'll be as unacceptable to them as it is to us. Chief Fontaine, thanks for your time. Good to Thank see you. you.